Hi everybody. Recently I've been working to bring back to life this antique vacuum tube radio. It's a uh, Atwater Kent model 55C from around 1929 or 1930 and um, I got everything working pretty well. It works very very good so far except for one little problem or maybe a big problem and that is the rectifier tube is quite gassy inside. You can see it has all this purple violet discharge actually on um, the camera it looks kind of bluish but trust me uh, to the human eye it's very violet color and um, that's not good it's supposed to be a vacuum in there there's not supposed to be any gas and it's certainly needs needs to be replaced here's the tube out of the radio it's a cunningham cx380 full wave rectifier tube with the with the 5 volt filament and two anodes on the inside there for uh, hooking up to a, a center tap secondary coil on the transformer and I don't have a replacement for it um, at least not an exact replacement a 380 or a 280 or just an 80 uh, they're all pretty much the same tube um, but there is an electrical equivalent and that is something I have plenty of these is the 5U4 or not 5U it's the the 5Y3 the 5Y3 has the same um, electrical characteristics as the 80 um, should be a good replacement for it except of course for the bases down here so you know that's a, a four pin base this is an octal base with only five pins existing so I'm gonna have to make a converter for that and in order to do so, I'm going to have to break the, uh, the tube off of this base and then take a tube socket, something like that, aqua tube socket, and then put that onto the base here so I can plug the 5Y3 into the tube socket, which will be mounted on top of the 4-pin base. And finally, before I even do that, I want to have a little bit of fun with this tube because I could potentially very likely perhaps break the the glass bulb in order to free it from the the bottom base and uh, it's still a functioning vacuum tube despite all the the gas or at least I hope so I haven't run it in a couple of weeks since the uh, since I took that footage at the beginning of the video that you saw but anyway you can even see some of the the getter material nice and silver color on this side but on the inside it has uh, some white color that's the clear clear sign of oxidation or contamination on the inside it's been reacting whenever this stuff reacts it turns a white color like that so we'll see if this thing works we'll see if the hopefully the getter material has been you know absorbing a good portion of the gas and then we can get some kind of um, plasma discharge through some low pressure gas that may still be re remaining in there and I'm going to just amp it up until it's totally destroyed, at least electrically destroyed on the inside. And we'll see what kind of cool stuff happens. Got no idea how far this is going to go. And here's the experimental setup. Got 120 volt AC going to a variac, going to the primary of a transformer. Um, transformer really designed exactly for this purpose for vacuum tube circuits with a 5 volt AC coil and a plus minus 350 volt AC secondary for the, the anodes and then a center tap on that and of course that's that gets rectified into the load and there's the the physical the variac and the transformer and of course I got uh, ammeter right here the the fluke and also going to monitor the the DC voltage on the load and uh, the load itself is just a couple of resistors right now it's 2500 ohm with the two of these in series and there's the tube right there all right i'm going to start cranking it up slowly now again we got the uh, dc load current right here and dc voltage on the load right there and that's just uh that's going to be thousand volt full scale whoa there we go man that is so cool
Man, oh man, I see a big difference between the camera view and my view. And uh, I'm really only putting, what, 555 volts or so on the primary, and already it's looking pretty awesome and negligible current. Let me see, I get a lot more, no? Jeez, hardly anything on the current, yet still there's quite a bit of arcing here, so that's load current. I guess there's really nothing going to the load. Everything is being discharged in the tube itself. Let me play around with the lighting here so I can get a better match for uh, human vision to the camera. Okay, increased ambient lighting all over the place now. So, let the filament warm up a little bit here. There we go. Look at that. That's a pretty good match. It's a little bluer on the camera, but really quite violet or purplish, magenta-ish color on the uh, with my own eyes. And it's just glowing all over the place, too. I mean, on the outside. And, whoa, where's that green stuff coming from? Holy crap. That, that looks, oh my God. That is awesome. It looks like it's coming from the getter material. What the heck? Yeah, the little, there's a corner, the getter plate is a little um, square shaped plate down there. And uh, it's growing, glowing green on one corner of it. Starting to finally get some DC current. You got 34 milliamps and only 100 volts DC going to the resistors there. I'm starting to smell some burning too. That might be the resistors over here. Mm, nope, they're not getting they're not getting very warm at all yet. Must be all in the tube. Yeah, the tube is really hot here. Awesome. I hope it gets even hotter. I'm gonna crank it up. Ooh, look at that. Oh man, the anode's starting to glow red hot. That's awesome. Wow, that is awesome. Look at that. A thing of beauty. Beauty and destruction. Ooh, more green stuff. I'm at 110 volts. Whoa, sparklies. There it goes. Something fried. Oh yeah, I think I see what happened there. Looks like both both filaments are making contact to the anode plates on the inside. Yeah, we got a really bad short circuit there. All right, and there we have it. So those two little hooks on the top that hold the filament up, they must uh, the hooks must have lost flexion from all the extreme heat in there, and uh, they just bent out, straightened out a little bit, and um, touch the filament to the anodes and that's the end of that and the getter material in there that's uh, turned a nice iridescent pattern like a pool of oil on a rainy day in a parking lot very nice colors and I got to make sure the transformer survived because I didn't have any fuses in here except for the 10 amp fuse in the ammeter so I'm going to crank that up and actually i gotta flip this on to ac volts there we go there we go yep transformer survive it's rated for 125 milliamp um, steady state current but on the secondary the high voltage secondary the low voltage 5 volt coil was rated for 10 amps, so I'm not even going to bother testing that. I know that thing survived. Or no, I think it's rated for 3 amps. Yeah, it's rated for 3 amps. Got it hooked up to the secondary coil and still the 5 volt coil. And we get about 5 volts, 6 volts. This thing goes, the variac, I'm turning up to a full 140 volts and we get like 6.6 uh, 6 volts coming out of there. So, no problem. 
All right, now coming back to the tube, I want to do one more experiment, and that is just to see, just for the heck of it, to see if I can break off the base from the glass without breaking the glass, or the base for that matter. So I'm going to try whacking it with the screwdriver. I think it's a fiberglass base, so should be quite durable. Oh, I think it's starting to get loosened up a little bit here. You'll notice that I'm doing it on the table and right above one of the supports here for this table or actually it's a desk, cheap Walmart particle board desk here, but doing it right over top here for some good uh, bottom support. Yeah, it's certainly getting kind of loose. Oh, look at that. I can turn it now. Sweet. So it's still, even though I can rotate it, it's still kind of held in place. I don't think necessarily at the moment it's not held in place by the wires, which are soldered onto the inside of these hollow pins, but actually it's held in place by the the glue wrapped around the, the bottom lip of the, the glass envelope on the inside there. You know, just bang it around a little more. Yeah. Certainly more mobile now. You can even tilt it like that. There's some of the, uh, the glue material. I really have no idea exactly what that stuff would be called. There we go. Yeah. All right. Now it's definitely held in place just by the wires. So if I twist them enough, I can break some of them here. Oh, oh, bummer. I think I did break the glass. Finally. Oh yeah. I guess I should have expected that. Twisting the wires. The wires get wrapped around the evacuation tube on the inside there. So that's that's what broke. If I didn't twist the wires like that, then it would have been just fine. The glass, the entire glass bulb would have been... Um, would have survived the ordeal, but not in this case. The socket, fully intact. So we've got a couple of wires down inside there, no biggie. But yeah, very nice socket. That'll make a pretty good converter. I can just stick one of these other octal sockets in there. Look at that, it's like a perfect fit. Awesome. And here is the finished adapter. Real quick, easy thing. Just got to solder four wires from the pins, the female pins, to uh, select male pins in here for the, the 5Y3 tube. And then a bunch of super glue around the outside. This particular socket fit almost perfectly inside the, the base. I got, I got really lucky there with, uh, with the mechanical construction of it. Anyway, before I hook up the the tube, put this thing into the radio. I want to test it first, of course. Got my TV7D slash U tube tester and um, everything's all set up. I'm going to push the rectifier button over here and we'll see what number we get on the meter. It should be at least 40 for a good tube, according to the manual. Now let's try that again. And we're getting about 43 or 44 out of 40. That's just on one of the plates, plate number one. Let me flip this switch down here, put it on plate number two. And 39 or 38 out of 40, that's not very good. This tube is just barely within spec. But I got some others I can test. We'll see how those do. So I've got six other 5Y3s. Here's five of them. Sixth one is right here ready to go. And uh, actually I've tested it already. Pushed the rectifier button and I found it's pretty good. Plate one is 51 and 
plate two is see this button's a little touchy here I gotta there we go so right about 46 47 with a 40 being a minimum so this tube is pretty good I think I'll use this one one more quick test testing it as an 80 tube with the tube socket converter in place push the rectifier button and uh, nothing happens well son of a bitch a little poking around with the ohmmeter reveals that I got every single one of these connections wrong all four of them they're all going to uh, the wrong pins and I got this soldered or not soldered uh, super glued all the way around it's gonna be a bitch to pry this thing out and try to fix it here's a quick view halfway through the repair I had to um, amputate the top portion of the original tube base so uh, there's leftover wires that I had soldered in before and as for this thing I decided to completely remove all of the unnecessary pins because the tube itself only has five pins in place where there could potentially be eight and only four of them are used this one right here is not electrically connected but um, I kept the uh, the one equivalent pin that it plugs into I kept it in place just for mechanical friction support that's uh, it's that one right there so I cut that short and bent it down but the other four that are necessary for the filament and for the the two uh, anodes those are all still there with nothing else uh, no no other ambiguous parts that I could get mixed up I think what happened originally is I just got mixed up the convention for tube basing diagrams is looking at the bottom of the socket or the bottom of the tube and I must have soldered it as if I was looking at the top of the tube or the top of the socket all right got everything soldered back together now it's not glued in at all I certainly won't be doing any gluing this time until everything else is completely done and working and even then super glue wouldn't work very well for this thing either I'd have to stick some Gorilla Glue or something in there to uh, fill in all these all the void around the the outside of the the tube base anyway let's pop this thing in here and then put the tube in there let the filament warm up for a few seconds here and yep I can see the filament glowing in there everything else is all set up here I'll just push the rectifier button and sure enough on uh, plate number one we've got a 44 out of 40 and plate number two 40 out of 40 so I don't know what the heck happened there why is it so low well that might be it it's because the filament voltage isn't exactly 5 volts so I'm going to crank up the the line adjust here and on this particular tube tester this is absolutely critical that I test the the tube voltage because I've got it set for exactly 5 volts now but when I do the line test here should be the needle should be all the way up at 60 right there in the middle but it's not so can't really go by what the meter says I gotta do the the manual test here just to make sure that the tube that the filament is at a good voltage now try again rectifier yeah that's 51 around 51 50 or 51 out of 40 and then for the other plate plate number two again touchy switch here there we go 47 out of 40 it's up there yeah so exactly what it was before when I had it over here in the other tube socket and finally we get to plug the finished product into the radio again it's an Atwater Kent 55C um, just says 55 right here but the label over here says model 55C I got this at a flea market many years ago one unfortunate feature is that it has this ugly paint around here from the research that I've done 
Uh, this thing was most likely installed inside a hexagon shaped table. Kind of looks like this. And I can only guess that at some point that table must have been gotten painted by somebody. Painted this ugly ivory color all around instead of, you know, trying to refinish a nice wood grain pattern. Anyway, um, I just got the radio. I didn't get the original speaker. This is just an ordinary 8 ohm speaker that I have back here. One important feature that I've also learned in trying to fix this thing is that the original 8 ohm speaker or 16 ohm or 4 ohm or whatever the original homage was it had a field coil now this of course is just a permanent magnet speaker but the original speaker from 1929 or 1930 would have had a uh, electromagnet to create the field magnetic field in there and um and uh, that was also in series with the DC power supply for the entire radio. That field coil was part of the DC power supply. And if you don't um, take that into account, then this thing is never going to work. So uh, this is a, a ramshackled connector that I made for the, the speaker connector. It's just like a little tube socket kind of thing not exactly the same as a four pin tube socket but a little bit smaller we got the the uh, the cone coil right here the voice coil hooked up to these two pins here and then the other, other two pins simulates the resistance of the original uh, speaker field coil probably about a thousand ohm I've got a couple of 420 ohm resistors in series here for a uh, 840 ohm close enough to a thousand and uh, we'll just plug this in and turn it on and see if it works okay got the radio plugged in to 120 volt flip the switch and i turned off most of the ambient light around here so we can bask in the warm orange glow of the tubes making the nice fuzzy warm sounds coming out of the speaker and we hear something. All right, it is working. Turn down the volume. Well, there we go. This radio works beautifully. Um, another bonus is that it's all original capacitors. I really haven't changed any uh, major components other than the one rectifier tube. Had to fix some of the, the caps on the, uh, the top terminals of these two tubes. And uh, the, the rubber wheel in here, there's a little rubber friction wheel that contacts a big gear for the, the front dial had to replace that of course because that was all dry rotted but other than that it's all original it's a wonderful radio i'm really glad i uh, fixed this thing i learned a lot about vacuum tube radios in general when fixing this thing and uh, i give it a thumbs up and if you like this video i ask you to also please give it a thumbs up and one more thing, I decided to make a little change, and that is to go back to the original tube that I had selected for it. This is a 5Y3G. Um, yeah, there we go, 5Y3G, whereas the, the smaller one is a 5Y3GT. Specifically, the tube, uh, the glass envelopes are ST14 and T9, respectively. 
but anyway i decided to go with the the st14 just because it looks more antique -y. it's curvier and it matches the other tubes that i have down here and even these tubes inside the shields are the same shape so i'll just plug this one in here and even though we measured on the tube tester it was a uh, 44 and 39 out of 40 on the uh, the tube tester 39 out of 40 is not bad especially for a rectifier tube so plug it in turn it on should still be working just fine and there we go works fine and dandy with the other tubes that i just put in beautiful radio beautiful tubes beautiful project and beautiful plasma from this thing that we saw man that was the best part so see you later